All right, baby. Back in deer camp. I'm excited. And I'm hurrying up and waiting. <laughs> Granddaddy got out as soon as I got in. And I'm rolling back. <laughs> All right. Take two. Back in deer camp. I am pumped to be out here. For the first time all season, all three of us, see Ryan back there, all three of us have a buck down on the ground. So I feel, now I feel relaxed. I feel like I can enjoy myself. This stress and the pressure. <laughs> well, it's difficult. It's difficult to be the last one in the group to shoot one. Ryan shot his on youth day. Dad shot his not long after the season opened. 90 minutes into the hunt. 90 minutes into his first hunt of the year. And here I sit. So finally got one on the ground just before Thanksgiving. And uh, Hang on, Ryan. you'd think with all that relief and feeling like, you know, <laughs> uh, that, that it had finally happened that I'd be somewhat uh, less inclined to be out here. But I was actually chomping at the bit to come back out here and see if we can't get another one, a bigger one. <laughs> so we're down at Dad's, uh, down at Dad's hunt club now. He was nice enough to offered to lend me his stand. Got some nice deer coming in, so. Jeez. <laughs> if we make it to the stand with all of our eyes Hold intact. on, Ryan, hold on. <laughs> We're gonna see if we can't do some good tonight. We're gonna stay the whole weekend and just have a blast camping, cooking out. Maybe make some camp food. I'm not staying the whole weekend. What are you doing? I'm going to sleep over tomorrow. Ah, uh, well, some of us are hunting the whole weekend. Back to it. Hands down, one of my favorite things about hunting is that it brings us all together. On these trips, we have three generations together in the outdoors. A group of deer show up right at dusk, but I couldn't make out what I was shooting at, so we passed. The next morning, we woke up to the sound of driving rain on the roof of the camper, so hunting was out. What was that? Annoying. <laughs> what you doing in here? Playing. But that gives us time to eat a good meal and find some more things to do. What did you make for us this morning, Granddad? We have frambled eggs and liver mush on tortillas. Oh, I think we're gonna have trouble finding anything with gums, but oh, I see something else down here. Come on. See all these? What kind of these? What do you got in here? So Ryan's on a little bit of a quest right now. Uh, he got up and had breakfast this morning because we couldn't go hunting. He wanted to have s'mores. S'mores. We told him we're kind of a nighttime snack or dessert, but he wants some after his breakfast. So I told him if he could go out here and find the leaves from three different kind of trees around the hunting camp, uh, just around the camping area, that he could have his s'mores for breakfast. You give Ryan the proper motivation, he could literally do anything. It's mostly pine trees. All right, how'd you do? Good. What'd you find? I found this leaf, maple, a gum leaf, this Oops. random leaf. <laughs> so I think, what do you think, Granddaddy? You think he, think he's completed his challenge? Well, I'm against s'mores for breakfast, but he completed his challenge, so. Not all leaves from trees, but I think we can bend the rules a little bit. Comment below if you know this leaf. <laughs> Comment below. I think we'll bend this. the rules a little bit. <laughs> It's important to keep them interested and engaged even when we're not able to hunt, so at least it was educational, even right, if we're so giving we him come, sugar for breakfast. Come back down here. Afton, I'm sorry. The weather cleared in the afternoon, so we hashed out a new plan.
back to it. Day two. Ryan had to go home. Had a friend's birthday party he wanted to go to, so it's just Dad and I tonight. Trying to find Dad a place to hunt on this wind. It shifted on us a little bit. Thinking we found a spot. What do you think? The rail's awfully low. One thing that I like to do, if you're fortunate enough to harvest a buck in the rut, you're gonna keep hunting. Take that tarsal gland, active tarsal gland off that buck. Be careful not to get your scent on it. Go ahead and just tie it up on a string right now. I happen to only have a piece of paracord handy. Just tie that up. Then we use that as a scent drag. I'll tie that onto a belt loop and just drag that with me. A little bit of a cover scent, a little bit of an attractant for any of those bucks that are still still in the rut. We tracked to the edge of our property, but hopes quickly faded with no sign of the deer. All right, back at deer camp, working on some dinner. I'm gonna rest up before we go back out. Well, at least one of us is working on dinner. I'm not, I'm not being much help. Still kind of licking my wounds here. Um, not my best shot. We took another look at the footage and 100% sure that I hit the deer. Um, they put a good hit on him, but I definitely pulled the shot. And I'm not sure that I got any of the vitals. We weren't able to pick up a blood trail. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be so fortunate on this one. So I'm just sit here to kind of review the footage and stew over this one, because I know this is, this is gonna make me sick, especially shooting an animal and not being able to recover it. Um, we'll make another effort again in the morning, but late season, post rut, you know, it just feels like with that deer never having been on camera before is probably going to be something I'm going to have to sit here and stew over for at least the next year. So, it, you know, that's going to bother you for the rest of your life. I know you, and I know how you think. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> some of our good friends and followers on Instagram put us in touch with some great folks with tracking dogs, and we couldn't be more grateful. All right, so early the next morning, um, we've got my new friend, Eric Johnson, out here to help us look for this deer. And um, while I'm, I'm not excited that we got to track this deer, I'm really excited to see your dog work. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, this is Leupold. Um, he is a Bavarian mountain hound. Uh, he, we imported him from Germany about five years ago. And uh, he's trained to track deer, well, actually any wounded animal, uh, just based on the scent from their hooves. Um, he doesn't need any any blood at all while he's tracking, and uh, he's done tracks uh, far over 24 hours after the shot without any difficulty at all. That's great. So. That's great. Well, we're we're excited. Really appreciate you driving out this morning. Yeah, so absolutely. Really appreciate that. Um, 
we're uh, right now we're just kind of milling around. We're waiting on permission from the from the landowner. Um, we're pretty sure that that deer kind of bolted off to the west and onto the neighboring property. So we want to do everything by the book um, once we get him on the trail. But we're excited to see him work. Yeah, I know it's be, it'll be a good day. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we finally got a hold of the guy who owns the neighboring property. Super nice guy. Um, sounded like he was going to give us permission to go in there and look, but uh, he also sent us a picture of a similar deer that showed up on his camera this morning at five o'clock um, with a nasty shoulder wound. And um, looks, I mean, it's the same deer, clearly. Um, so shot clearly wasn't fatal. Looks like I just pulled it. I guess that, you know, it's hunting, it happens to everybody. Um, I'm sick over it for injuring that animal, but, you know, showing the picture to a lot of different folks. Um, you know, we're hopeful that, I mean, since the wound wasn't fatal, hopefully he'll make a full recovery and uh, be able to hunt him again some other time. Go home and make sure that rifle sighted in, put in some more practice. That's all you can do. I took a few days to rest and reflect, but with the season winding down and Christmas dinner still somewhere out there in the woods, I had to get back at it. All right, so it's getting down here now. Late season. Opportunities are starting to, to wane here a little bit. I'd uh, love to get another buck on the ground. Still sick over what happened the other day. Time to get serious again. Get back in the woods and make a last good effort here. Try to get some fresh venison for Christmas. I love this tree stand. It's in a thicket. I mean, just a couple of little shooting lanes and some cutovers where the deer like to cross. And there's signs of good activity down here on the ground. There's not very many people that know about this tree stand and even fewer that hunt it because it's just a chore to get back in here. But those are exactly the kind of places that I love to go. It's exactly what I love to do in the late season too, is just kind of push yourself to go further, further in than most people have been. And try to get to some undisturbed areas. So let's see if it pays off for me today. Once I got set, my gamble paid off just before sunset. I could hear a deer moving, but I had a problem. He was behind me, moving from my four to my six o'clock. I tried to adjust my cameras, but it required too much movement and I felt like I was making too much noise. It's a mistake I've made before. I had to make a decision. Ultimately, I decided the shot was more important than the footage. I used the tree between me and the deer to hide my movement as best I could and set up for the shot. I was equally excited and relieved to have another chance at a nice buck after everything that had happened. Not wanting to risk bumping him, I gave him plenty of time. But not long into the track, I got an all too familiar feeling. And then your mind starts racing. I've been walking around out here for about an hour and 10 minutes and I still have not found the first single speck of blood. Um, I'm starting to really lose confidence that I even hit that deer. Where are the game trails? Which way did he approach? Did he spin around and go back the way he came? Or did he go up, um, you know, exit uh, past my feeder, um, up another game trail where they'll approach on certain winds? And I found nothing. I mean, absolutely zero. But stick to what you know. Not always, but often an injured deer will run downhill and towards water. I found a drainage ditch that led to a collection pond. <clears throat> this is about the highest point that I can find.
I don't believe it. Well, I don't know what that is. There's the smallest little heat signature on this thing on the other side of this pond. Go check it out before the storm will dies. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I see a white belly. That owl freaked me out. Holy cow, I see a white belly and I see eyes. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Holy cow. I mean, just randomly searching out here. And this stuff is so thick. I cannot believe it. I mean, I can't believe it. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord. Unbelievable. Without that thermal, zero chance of finding this deer zero i was out here just blindly searching walking in circles i still haven't seen a speck of blood so i've got a pretty good hike out of here to get the bad boy and get it back in here and get this deer out um, and i don't want to lose him again so one thing that i like to do is just leave a glow stick up here in the tree it gives you a, a waypoint um, makes it a lot easier finding that deer when you come back something like this it was hard enough to track him the first time and i do not want to do it again i'm so pumped I'm so pumped. I gotta put the camera down. I wanna go check this deer out. Holy cow. <laughs> a really pretty, really pretty six point. I mean, just a beautiful deer. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, I'm thrilled. I am thrilled. Awesome. So I am so excited. I'm more excited than you could possibly realize for this dinner because I'm, one, I'm absolutely starving, and then two, um, if you followed us, this has been a very long season. This has been a long time in coming. We're so grateful that it kind of came together at the end of the season here um, with uh, a buck, a really nice buck that we'd had on camera and just so excited to have him. And um, we're gonna cook up some tomahawk steaks tonight. We've done a lot of backstrap, cooked it a variety of ways and excited to try something new. It's no surprise that backstraps are one of the most popular cuts of venison. Tomahawk steaks are nothing more than backstraps still attached to the rib cage. Butchering takes a bit more time, but the flavor and presentation is worth it. Go ahead and take the back part of this back strap off, which not being too careful when I was when I was cleaning the deer, I got a little bit of the side meat that was still in there. So you can see it cleanly separates here from the back strap. So we're just gonna go ahead and take that right off. I wanna get all this side meat laying over the top of these ribs off and all that silver skin. Just follow it down with your fillet knife, kind of working it up and down. It just exposes all those ribs. So we're just gonna follow this down and cut all this meat in between the two ribs out. So just follow one of the ribs down all the way to the back strap. easier if we flip this guy over. Flip it over so we can see what we're doing. We don't want to cut into the back strap. Follow the rib down. And cut all that meat that's in between there off. And we're gonna come back and clean this up really nicely to where that bone is just nice and white and exposed. We're gonna do this for every single one of these until each of these um, is nice and clean and then we're going to come back and cut in between those ribs until this looks something like this. Once that's done, you've cleaned all the meat out from between each of the ribs. Just wanna come in here and separate the ribs, cutting in between them just to give yourselves tomahawk sticks. Look at that. Nice. Nice looking cut of meat. Drop that right over here on our plate. We're gonna do the same thing for the rest of this rack. Okay, we're gonna make this really easy tonight. All we're gonna do is add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, some of our favorite seasoning, some butter and some lemon thyme on the top of these tomahawk steaks. We're gonna saute them in the pan, a couple of minutes each side. The thickness is a little bit different on these four cuts of meat. 
Uh, so we want that perfect medium rare center. So we're gonna watch them closely, take them off when we feel like they're just perfect, finish them off on a bed of linguine pasta. Perfect. Let's go. One does not simply pick up the tongs without first clicking them twice like a crab. It's the it. Well, it doesn't going into the pan. Sure it does. It's For a, reals? Yeah, it's got a, yeah. Um, okay, go ahead. Okay, so now I'm ready to put these in the pan. <laughs> let me take the artsy stuff off. Why are you taking my lemon time off? All right, listen up here, peoples. Um, so I got our tomahawk steaks here. We got like a pad of butter on here. This is like a like a half of a tablespoon on each, maybe a little bit less. And we're just gonna drop this in the pan. We lightly coated with olive oil, you know, just uh, a thin layer across the pan. Put the butter on top and just let it sit on top. And as that butter kind of melts, it's gonna run down all over the top and the outside of that steak. It's gonna be an absolutely awesome flavor. So. So lay these in there. Your thicker pieces are going to go for a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and put those in first. And you find a way to lay these things in here with the bones. Okay. This is why it takes me three weeks to edit a video. This is a great example. My appearance on YouTube has been canceled. Goodbye. So we already flipped the smaller two. We let the larger two go for about two minutes longer. Look at that. Bam! Is that how you do it? Bam! <laughs> Not as good as you, but there you go. How about that? Would you look at that? That's some good color. Oh, goodness gracious. A little char on the outside. Here we go. What do you think of that? Coming right off the grill. Look at that. Coming right off the pan, anyway. That. Where is my camera, y'all? That <laughs> looks outstanding. I'm so excited. It looks so good. That looks so good. Nice job, Dad. Yes, sir. So we got the garlic in here. Now we're going to add our lemon juice, and I'm going to wait a minute all on these pads of butter. Lemon juice, let that just warm up. Sound of that, it's not gonna take long. Ooh, it smells good. Yeah. Let's go ahead and add the butter then. All right, so it's been a while since Athena and I have had a proper sit down dinner together here in the house. So I'm gonna plate this thing up for her and try to make it look really nice. It shouldn't be hard based on the way this thing came off the stove. It looks absolutely phenomenal. And we're just gonna sit down and relax together and uh, enjoy this meal. I'm looking forward to it. Not, Not too, too shabby. Sure. <laughs> that looks pretty good. It's like an improvised date night. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Oh, it smells so good. That's perfect. God, thank you for this food and this day. We thank you for all of our many blessings. We thank you for the blessing of this harvest. I thank you for your blessing on our life and our family. I thank you for this amazing woman. Yes, yeah, so you bless this food to our bodies and us to your service. In your son's name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's dig in. It looks so good. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this one. Food Network, baby. Yes! <laughs> Nailed it. This is good. Oh, we forgot. You guys are still here. We're going to send you guys all. Thank you so much for joining us. This was amazing. We're going to finish our little 
impromptu date night here and just enjoy dinner together. And so, so, so excited for this. It was absolutely amazing and so easy to cook up. I mean, a total cook time I think was like 14 minutes. So no big deal. You guys absolutely have to try this. Stick with us. We'll see you next time and God bless. Thank you. Dive back in. Bye-bye. <laughs>